Today we're going to be talking about atherosclerosis, its pathogenesis. So atherosclerosis is largely the result of a combination of family history as well as external modifiable environmental factors. Family history means a genetic predisposition for dyslipidemia, hypertension, and type 2 diabetes. The external factors would include diabetes mellitus, hypertension, and smoking, as well as dyslipidemia, which usually means high low-density lipoproteins, LDL, and low HDL, high-density lipoproteins. Now, starting with dyslipidemia, because high-density lipoproteins aids in the transport of low-density lipoproteins from the periphery back to the liver for breakdown, low levels of HDL allows for more rapid accumulation of LDL in the vessel walls. And this, in combination with genetically high levels of LDL, means that more LDL is there to diffuse across the damaged endothelium and accumulate in the intima layer of the arterial wall. Other factors, such as smoking, will directly worsen dyslipidemia via unclear mechanisms. Smoking also results in inhaled free radicals entering the blood, which causes direct damage to the arterial endothelium, allowing more LDL to diffuse across it and accumulate in the intima layer of the artery wall. Hypertension, which is the chronic high-pressure forces acting against the artery wall, and diabetes, which consists of glucose excess altering the endothelial cell metabolism, will both also cause direct damage to the arterial endothelium, resulting in more LDL diffusing across it and accumulating in the intima of the artery wall. LDL in the intima is then oxidized into lipids that trigger chronic inflammation in the vessel wall. This results in elevated systemic markers of inflammation in the blood, which can be detected as elevated serum CRP, C-reactive protein. Serum CRP can also be evaluated as an independent predictor of atherosclerosis. Now, once chronic inflammation is triggered in the vessel wall, that inflammation recruits monocytes into the blood vessel wall, which then differentiate into macrophages. The macrophages phagocytose the oxidized LDL and become filled with fat. Henceforth, these cells are termed foam cells. These streaks of fatty tissue can be observed between the endothelium and the smooth muscle layer of the artery. And these fatty streaks, as they're termed, can actually be seen on pathological specimens, which is an early indicator of developing atherosclerosis. Now back to the pathophysiology. Over time, the foam cells accumulate in the intima to form an enlarging lipid core. This lipid core has a fibrous connective tissue layer accumulating around it, forming a, a fibrous cap. Foam cells also release many inflammatory mediators, which increases the proliferation of media smooth muscle cells. These cells detach, enter the lipid core, and further enlarge it. Eventually, this lipid core with its surrounding fibrous cap develops into an atheroma, a lipid-filled plaque that can enlarge and eventually impinge or block the vessel lumen in the artery wall. This is atherosclerosis. Over time, the atheroma can calcify and further enlarge, and then can either remain stable, which means not rupturing, or rupture, which results in the complications of atherosclerosis. And we have a Calgary Guide slide dedicated to that topic as well. And that's it for the pathogenesis of atherosclerosis. If you enjoyed or learned something from this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks, and see you in the next Calgary Guide video.